let us start today's work, today's uh, job. I hope some of you of you will join. <coughs> now, yesterday we have first of all we are going going through how to control the different function of a power plant thermal power plant itself. Now, how we can control control why we are, we are supposed to control? We have discussed the reason is a power plant from power plant what you are expecting what is the output is the electricity and this electricity is demand of electricity is varies with, with time means its load by acting on the power plant varies throughout the day even throughout the month even throughout the years and you have to adjust the power plant accordingly adjust the output of the power plant is accordingly actually what you have where it is getting your output is the uh, turbine section which creates a torque and rounds the uh, uh, electric, electric generator as per the requirement itself. And this turbine should have a specific design torque and specific which is runs from a specific temperature and pressure given given to the turbine. Uh, uh, a specific temperature and pressure of the vapor injected on the blades of the turbine through the different nozzles itself. Now. This pressure and temperature we are supposed to control as per the design requirement of the turbine itself. I told you, assess you different way of doing, uh, going through the temperature control itself. But there are other ways, other uh, part items which we are required to control accordingly. Now, let us go through what is the gas bypass or damper control system of a turbine. If at any time, the flow of gases through a convective superheater is reduced without charging the steam flow, the final temperature will reduce itself. So what we are doing, how we are creating temperature, how we are creating temperature in the furnace is this. We are, first of all, we are using water as our uh, raw material inputs in power plant, you can say. And we are converting into steam from by, by boiling it by means of heat and that steam is then gets superheated to a, up to a temperature around 580 five, degrees centigrade. This superheated steam, which don't have any uh, any particular, any water droplets or anything and passes through the nozzle under specific pressure and this with this temperature passes through the nozzle which converts this heat and uh, special energy into the kinetivity, kinematic uh, energy, kinetic energy, which means the velocity of the uh, stream flow will increase. Now, what we are doing here, we are boiling this boiling the water to steam. And how we are getting the boil uh, temperature of boiling the water is we are getting it from uh, burning the fuel, uh, coal, mostly the fuel inside the furnace itself, and thus creating temperature, creating high temperature, which ensures the boiling of the furnace itself. Now, the flow of gases, what we are getting from the furnace is after burning the coal. The huge amount of heat is generated, and this is will furnace. The it, this will be transmitted by convection and to a good extent by radiation by the flow of the gases, which is generated by after burning a certain fuel. Now, this flow has very high temperature, and it goes through the a certain a portion of its flow is used as a convective medium of uh, supplying heat, and another portion is given as radiation radiant heat. Now, there are few convert, there super heater which uses the convective super convection of uh, the heat transfer by convection means this super heater is exposed into this, into this flow of hot gases, including the fume itself, so that it gets its energy from the gases to the supervisor itself. Now, first of all, we have what we can do we can how we can control the output of the control the temperature of the steam coming out of the, of the superheater is superheater is it's reduced uh, the flow of gases over the convective process can be controlled it can be reduced and it can be increased without changing the steam flow so if the flow remains flow of gas is reduced by changing the steam flow change, steam flow rate is also remains same then the final temperature will be reduced because less amount of heat is being supplied to the steam itself the gas bypassing of the superheater or damper control utilizes this principle so gas bypassing is a phenomenon or method 
to supply less heat to the supervisor, supervisor or by or the dump by or it is controlled by the dumper utilize this type of principle itself if it is desired to have a con have constant temperature constant steam temperature then <clears throat> then uh, it is desired to have a constant steam temperature for one fourth steam flow and higher so um, there is the different uh, what you'll say the segment of simple to have the temperature to make the temperature to, uh, of the steam up to retirement now it is desired that to have constant temperature for three fourth of the steam flow and higher then the super meter is designed to give its proper steam temperature at three fourth steam flow the super is that output output of the steam outlet of the steam through the from the super super heater where we are supposed to supply the steam at that specified design load what we will show where we are supposed to go to is that three fourth of the steam to, uh, of the steam flow will have the three fourth higher, higher uh, rate of the steam flow will have the desired temperature itself and this remaining one fourth say can have the lower temperature itself now supervisor is supposed to given the proper steam temperature at three fourth of the steam flow so this bypassing of super, uh, gas should be such that it would have it will be gas will be diverse after a different interval say one th when after two thirds of the total steam flow moves then uh, gas is diverse that remaining heat remaining uh, steam means one fourth of the steam is um, getting less heat and thus reducing the temperature as a whole the temperature of the whole steam flow is to be reduced to a certain extent and all greater time steam flow some of the flugers are bypassed so if a certain mass of fluid fluid the steam is passes through the supervisor after a given period of time one third a uh, two third uh, sorry three fourth of the time where that it will be exposed to the total flow of heat of the gases and remaining one fourth of the time it should be exposed to the exposed less amount of gases if sometimes if possible no gases were exposed to it so all the heat generated are generated from the by the uh, fume a uh, fume or gases and transferred by conventional to the heat is being done only on the three fourth more or less three fourth of the flow of the steam and remaining portion is not heated by the convection itself <clears throat> Some of the flue gas is thus bypassed around the superheater to maintain the desired steam temperature itself. We have discussed the how the flue gases are. Um, how the temperature of the temperature of the steam and steam temperature of the uh, vapors of the steam vapor generator are controlled here so you see here is there are one is superheater one is reheater and one is the economizer these are all heat transfer if uh, heat is, this is all all three in different amount heat uh, uses the heat of the flue gases and transferring it to the steam steam or boiling water itself so that it is get boiled and the steam is produced up to the required temperature itself. Now, there are dumpers here. The dumpers are like a propeller blades, which can be moved by the rotation. If it is fully open, more amount of flue gas is going to go and go and pass the, pass the dumper and go and pass with all the heater heaters, super heater and uh, economical reheater. So, and if it's partially closed, more amount of less amount of uh, flue gas will pass through, and that will create that will have higher exposure of uh, flue gases to this dumper, supervisor, and uh, superheater and heater, and it will uh, it will absorb more heat more heat from it. As we are thinking, we are proposing that uh, three fourth of the total mass flow at a period, given period of time should get the full um, full heat conduction conduction from the flue gases itself. So three fourth of the time. After a given time, we'll have the dumpers at the restricted position where the uh, flue gas cannot be flow easily. So we will transfer the heat to the to the vapor itself, steam itself. Then either one fourth of the time the flue gas remains open, dumpers remains open, so that still 
house goes through it, comes, comes, out of, uh, comes out of it. Next, there is another method, you see, there is a gas flow is going on from here and going, follows this line more or less. This is a super heater, this is a one super heater, this is the economizer and gas flow starts going through here, through this line, through everything and comes out to the stacks, to the chimney or stack itself. Um, uh, there is a dumper, dumper or fan is there. This is the dumper here, like this. And dumper can be, as well as a fan, fan bed also provided there. Dumper can be recirculated, the, recirculate the gas from here. A portion will go in and if, if it is restricted or open, then a portion will come back again, go back to the gas flow. So when it's totally exposed, well, there is no, there is a restriction from this dumper itself, then the steam, what will do the steam will do the transfer maximum of heat to the economizer and superheater and go out. And if dumper if passage is open here, then a portion of the gas will come, come down here and goes back. Thus the full uh, energy, I mean the full heat energy is not exposed to the superheater or the economizer itself because they have the time to go out, go pass out through this dumper and fan and go back to the system itself. Thus, there they will deliver less amount of heat by convection to the steam running through the super heater or economizer itself. Next is now. So what we are doing exactly, we have certain blades which creates restriction and restriction to the flow of the um, uh, gases and which does, which restricts the flow of the gases to the, uh, restricts the flow of gas, gases and which does, if the flow is restricted, the main basic principle is the flow will be restricted Flow can the gas cannot be go pass out quickly, and that does it uh, transfer more and more amount of heat to the superheaters and heaters by convection itself. And if the dampers or uh, dampers or the pool or the um, or the blades for restriction is open totally, if the gas be by by means of its own own force and own speed will go out quickly and thus transfers less amount of heat to the superheater itself. This is the basic process we are using in damper control system for controlling this uh, steam temperature. So we are controlling uh, the steam temperature by means of supplying pure water to the, and injecting pure water to the steam, uh, steam itself, which will uh, be vaporized by the temperature, by the high temperature steam and thus absorbs a portion of the temperature, a portion of the heat from the steam which reduces the temperature of temperature for the gas itself. As another process, restrict the flow so that flow uh, of the gases are restricted and it is, it is more, it is a higher time of exposure to the heater, superheater and economizer and thus it will deliver more, more amount of heat to the convection itself. Next, what is that? Uh, if you open, uh, the flow will be normal and quick and thus it will have less amount of time, less amount of heat transfer to the steam itself. That's why this is the two processes with which we are controlling the steam generation itself. Control the temperature of the steam generator. Now gas circulation. Now gas recirculation, that is another phenomenon or process which we adopt in the steam power plant itself. How we are doing it in this system gas from some point uh, down from some point downstream the superheater and reheater mostly from the economizer or, or outlet but sometimes from the gas preheater outlet is reheat recirculated back so just one second please <coughs> hmm. what we are saying that we will recirculate a certain portion of the gas. But you see, the gas is the most, what will say, what is the converter most is a supply of heat 
is main supplier of heat or supply is medium of heat supply from the furnace to the supervisor superheaters also to the boiler drums in all these cases all the drums risers everywhere this gas is a gas where heated hot gas generated by the burning of the coal will pass through the riser walls thus creating that water to change the steam so um, steams coming out of the drum itself goes to the supervisor reheater one after another and big economizer etc is that basically all superheaters so our superheaters and their medium medium of uh, getting heat is mostly convection and radiation itself and this both this convection and radiation is happening by the gas circulating gas itself gas while circulating is uh, feeding the heat by convection and sometimes it all also created as a very heated place which is good enough for creating radiation itself and that radiated heat also supply to the supervisor as superheaters and i have told you there are pendant supervisor in primary superheaters heaters and secondary superheaters and reheaters sometimes that's so also one type of supervisor and economizer which gets the heat from the fume by convection heat the heat same from the fume but by a radiation itself so what we are doing so there's an important when this amount of gas circulation which is produced from the furnace itself from the drumness itself can have a definite flow definite say about the flow about the heat flow from gas to uh, superficie and it is it is a very much possible that whole heat of the gas is not used for reheating the steam or making it as a making it a superheated steam etc so some of it some of a bit good portion of it go out to the stacking itself but in order to improve the efficiency we have to use the heat of the residual heat of the gas again and again thus which is results in the recirculation back to the furnace by the means of a gas recycling system so we are sending back a portion of the gas uh, <coughs> it is circulated back to the furnace where it get again get mixed with the newly formed gas and got heated and go back to it so the total overall heat produced and carried by the gas for furnace is not being reduced to a mass extent because there is a continuous flow is going on between the steam between the uh, gas generating from steam and uh, which uh, by the gas generated by burning the coal within so prepared to air and generating steam there is generating uh, gases which produces steam and also doing so many heating operation and a portion of it instead of going back to the um, stack it comes back to the furnace again again reheated and goes the same work as the full circulation is going on now the function of the risers Uh, recirculated gases halter of the recirculated gas is to reduce furnace temperature absorption by directly diluting the furnace gas and lower furnace gas and uh as for just one second furnace and lowering the furnace at zone temperature radiant zone so what we are doing we are sending back a portion of the Uh, heated but used um, used a i mean the gas gases back to the furnace itself what does it does exactly it's mixed with the newly formed furnace and function of the recirculated gas is to reduce the furnace temperature absorption by diluting the furnace gas and lowering the furnace zone temperature radiant zone means furnace also has a definite uh, space which is the which is also got heated due to the high uh, high uh, heat gas high high temperature gases generated from the uh, from burning the fuel itself so a furnace portion also got heated not by the air got heated and thus those heat cannot be utilized much because those heat it is not exposed to the risers or not supervisor or anywhere else now so That to, the reaction of the reduced gas is, is to so this reduced gas will also to a certain extent 
reduce this radiant zone, reduce the temperature or heat content in the radiant zone of the furnace. With by that's why accumulate the space and take away the heat and the heat away from that zone with it to go out for the go up for the circulation is circulation is set. So it absorbs a considerable amount of radiant heat produced and kept in the furnace, which is not used and thus losing the efficiency of your total uh, steam power plant itself. Now, this total gas enthalpy leaving the furnace and leaving the furnace needs to be increased. However, because of the greater gas mass, thus greater gas mass, thus the gas velocity at the heat transfer rate in the convective supermeter are increased by recirculation. So what we are doing, the total gas enthalpy means total heat content of the enthalpy of the gas originally, uh, which is uh, came back for recirculation and the gas generated by the burning of the quill, then total gas enthalpy being the furnace needs to be, leaving the furnace to be increased. So, however, because of the quarter of the greater gas mass, thus the gas, however, because of the greater gas mass, uh, increased by the recirculation, as load fails, thus the gas velocity of the heat transfer rate in the incoming connected fluids are increased by recirculation itself. Uh, okay. Just because of the greater, because of the greater mass, total gas enthalpy leaving the furnace needs to be increased, and the because of the total gas, total greater gas mass itself. <coughs> hmm. Thus, what is how done? The gas velocity and the heat transfer rate in the convective supervisor are thus increased by the super recirculation because all are not going out, all the gases are not going out, a portion is comes back and it makes with the newly formed uh, fumes, thus increasing the volume or rate of flow bit better, load higher. Thus, as the load falls, but sometimes with the load falls, the greater gas mass is recirculated to maintain the fall superheat. So, what is going on? <coughs> Function of the of the greater greater gas the total gas enthalpy leaving the temperature needs to be increased. Total gas enthalpy ah, leaving the gas the total gas enthalpy means that energy content of the total gas leaving the furnace is to be increased so that more energy is available for transferring. However, some of because of the greater gas mass, however, because of the greater gas, gas mass, thus the velocity gas velocity heat transfer rate in the convex pressure increased by recirculation. Um, so greater gas enthalpy, you are confused to me, to me what is going on here? The total gas enthalpy leaving the furnace needs to be increased because of the greater gas mass itself. Because more amount of mass is supplied, so higher amount of enthalpy is also created in there. As the gas velocity and the heat transfer rate in the convective supervisors are increased by recirculation. But what happens when the load is reduced? <laughs> what happens when the load is reduced? As the load fails, a greater gas 
bat mass is recirculated to maintain the full superheat. So there should be some more restriction at the passage of the outlet of the in the stack, and you can have this restriction restriction usable or movable in such a way that greater mass goes goes to the recirculation itself, but full to maintain the full superheat. The effect of the gas so that more gas is allowed to go out instead of reducing in sending it back thus its uh, enthalpy is reduced to a certain extent and it is the enthalpy is certain thus the temperature the temperature of the gas will be thus uh, the flow of the gas will be thus on such control that the enthalpy remains the temperature remains same it is not going out uh, it is going up thus the as the road felt greater gas was thus recirculated here to maintain the full superheat itself. Full superheat. The effect of gas circulation is giving on figure in the, the effect of gas circulation is given here. Which shows that how the gas circulation influences the heat absorption economizer, primary, secondary, and pendant supervisor, reheaters, and the furnace itself. How the supply is affected. What you see, gas recirculation percentage. How much the volume, or percentage by volume, or percentage by weight of the gas is recirculated here. The change in heat absorption percent, percentage. It was, in fact, in, from zero, start zero is uh, starting from here, near minus 20. The temperature is reduced here. Minus 40 temperature reduced by 40 degree here, and from this place, 120, 40, 160 temperature is being raised. So from zero, the, this line, the, the temperature is reducing, going going back to the furnace itself, and here the higher heated temperature, higher heated, highly heated gases are go to the cylinder, secondary first, then reheater, then primary, then economizer. So these are both then more than zero degree price, so change in weight super absorption, zero, there was no change, it started from the point, it is changing heat absorption to plus by 20 degrees, 20% heat is absorbed, 40% heat is absorbed, and 60% heat is absorbed, that's why those heats are being used here, it's, it's all this for weight super heater, economizer, and reheater itself. Next, and the change in the heat transfer, which is reducing by 40 and 20 and 40, go back to the furnace itself. Thus, with the more and more gas are recirculated here, temperature is increased to there to a dark extent. But here, the more cycle inclusion, this temperature will be being reduced. Thus, reduce the total temperature of the stream itself. So, what happens in some gas recirculation system? Heat circulated gas is admitted near the furnace exit. Mm. Exit. This is called gas tempering. The furnace exit temperature is here reduced without affecting the furnace heat absorption. So, and some cases, recirculated gas are admitted near the furnace exit, where the gas gas with fumes are going out with high temperature. And if you recirculate that gas is sent there. It will reduce the temperature to that to a certain extent as desired, and this is called gas tempering. If the furnace exit temperature is is to be reduced here also because same some of a portion of it goes to there, and that being uh, transferring that they will transfer their heat to the uh, main furnace, thus reducing the furnace temperature to a certain extent, like we have superheated, and being used like this. The furnace exit temperature is to be reduced here without affecting. And furnace heat absorption is itself. <clears throat> Let us go for 45.
gas reverse discharge machine is somehow used in series with heat superheaters and a, temp a temperature for affecting steam temperature control. So we have a chart here. The load of percentage of load is going up to and 100% load is applied here, which is the maximum supposed to be the maximum capacity of a generator and the steam temperature is going up and down through it. So what we have uncontrolled superheater steam will steadily go up from here to here, temperature of the steam. And with attempteration, the steam will get controlled superheater, this comes here and through with attempteration, uh, a portion of the gas will go with gas circulation itself and remaining makes the heat and go out from the stack itself. Uh, second. Now, what is going on here? So what is seen in this chart is you see. So load percentage, steam temperature, just have told you what is shown here, a point A. This is the controlled superheater. The steam temperature remains same. There is such a well control, the steam pressure doesn't change in the output of super reserve. Next, uncontrolled superheater. This is really starting from here and going up here. With attempteration, this full temperature is being kept in a controlled position with attempteration itself. And this from temperature from here to here, the rest of the portion is done kept as it is by the recirculated air itself. Now, what will happen to the excess air? The increase the increase the contribution increase excess contribution increase excess contribution uh, combustion air has the effect of lowering the furnace temperature itself. Thus, since the radiant heat transfer is a function of difference of the fourth point of the temperature, the furnace heat absorption will be manually reduced when that furnace temperature is lowered by the use of excessive air. So what is going on? Increased uh, combustion of air. In the combustion of air has what will have? It has the effect of lowering the furnace temperature itself. This, although the air is heated, but if you uh, supply more than, the, more than that required for burning the coal, it will even there, it will load up, reduce to a good extent about the temperature of the furnace itself. Since the radiant heat transfer is a function of different, since the radiant heat transfer is a function of the difference of the total picture from total fourth power of the third temperature in the furnace, uh, since um, the heat transfer, since a radiant heat transfer. It's a junction of difference between the force power of the temperature and the furnace itself. Heat absorption will be materially reduced when the furnace temperatures are lowered by the use of excessive air. Now, this is one another process of reducing the temp temperature, just supply more air. And in the process, in the, by its own existence, it will reduce the high, te high temperature, the fumes, temperature of the fumes to a good extent. And Thus, the gas temperature entering the superheater is actually increased. This increase in gas superheater along with the furnace in flow mass flow varies with the steam generator itself. The gas temperature entering the superheater is actually increased. So, what is going on here? The superheater is being supplied, when heat is supplied by superheater by means of convection. What we are doing? We are reducing the temperature to a, by supply to comparatively cold air or room temperature air without preheating it and sent to the furnace. As, a, as in conduction of this uh, material, conduction of this heated, the temperature of the furnace will reduce to a certain extent. And so heat as a will like materially change, reduce when the furnace temperature are lowered by the use of excess cash, excess air. 
Because this is another weather. Weather is absorption, heat creation is all reduced by means of excess air itself. There, the gas temperature entered into the soil is actually increased. This increase in gas room temperature along the soil increases for pass flow, remains the same temperature itself. Although, in increased excess air is a means of steam temperature control, the increased mass of gas is stack material uh, manually lower the boiler efficiency. But what happens here? The increased excess air is a means of steam temperature, but with too much gas of increase, that air will go and pump out to the gas. So too much gas in the stack naturally reduce the boiler efficiency. Means too much gas in the stack means if you add supply excess air, the volume of gas will be mixed with this excess air. So total volume of this mixed air will, will be much higher. It will go up and do all this heating called by convection condition, then ultimately goes back to the stack for heating. But here, the recirculation, how good it can be? It will not able to Recirculate the maximum amount of gas, it is goes up to the atmosphere, thus wasting a lot of energy still carried by it itself. It cannot be recirculated itself. So that is the deficiency of that is the efficiency of reducing the boilers, the boilers efficiency itself. Next are the tilting furnace. Tilting or vertically adjustable burn, burners along the gas temperature. Tilting, vertically adjustable burners. That's next we are for talking about the, how we can burn, make the fuel burn by the burners itself. The tilting and, or vertically adjustable burner change the gas temperature in reduced gas temperature event. Tilting and vertical gas harness that change the gas temperature entering the solar adjusting by changing the elevation of the fireball with the furnace. Means tilting, but tilting or vertically adjustable with uh, furnace, uh, furnace can be tilted in one side, this way or that way, or it can move up and down in the furnace. Yes, change the depth control and furnace voltage to a considerable extent by changing the elevation of the firewall within the furnace itself. And at lower end, stream flows the furnace are tilted upwards. At lower load, the stream flows the burners and are tilted upwards. The usual range is plus minus 20 degrees, 20 degrees. So that the lower portion of the furnace becomes less effective in absorbing heat. So what happens here at lower load, the stream flow or less amount of stream is generated, burners are tilted upward. Means just move that usual range is 20, plus minus 20 degrees so that the lower portion of the furnace becomes less seated in absorbing energy. So by tilting it's one side, it cannot function to that extent. So by lifting it, the lower portion of the furnace is being absorbed by the gas absorption ratio. By effective energy itself. At low end, steam flows the burners are tilted upward. The usual range is plus minus 20 degree means it's 20 degree tilted so that the bar, lower portion of the furnace becomes less effective. And thus the gas that gas enters at a high temperature, uh, then if the burners are fixed and the The steam and the steam temperatures temperature are reducing, and the steam temperatures defeat the convection separator can be maintained constant from less than out one half load to the full load hundred percent. This is a satisfactory and economical method of temperature control itself. Okay, with this, I am stopping our work there. Only one student, has, uh, one student attended, and for the full session, okay, let us stop here.